This is a large autonomous helicopter. I got Devin here to tell you guys a little bit more about it. Devin, take it away. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, Devin with Rotor. Uh, this is our remote control R44. Uh, so the purpose of the company is to put the pilot on the ground and uh, save, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years experience. That way, if anything happens to the helicopter, uh, pilot walks away, goes home to his family at night. Right. Basically um, a large spray drone, right? Basically? Yes. Uh, this is one of the use cases. Uh, so you can either load it up with anything that bolts to an R44. So we got a spray boom here and uh, don't have the tank, but the tank can go there or uh, inside the cabin. Under the floors is all our electronics and then uh, actuators hugging the main mast. Uh, How do you control setup. it? How do you app on the phone? I mean, is it super simple? Like I hope or no? Uh, uh, not, not quite. Uh, it's either going to be in a uh, like a like a, br a big briefcase that you can you know you're just sitting in the passenger seat of your truck, AC crank and yep. you just you know lean back, flying the thing. Or um, if uh, I'd say if you do it beyond line of sight stuff. Uh, we offer a van with a full pilot station on the inside. Jeez. So, just trying to make it safer because a lot of times these things are only 10 feet above the crop. So yeah, agriculture, uh, ag spraying is a dangerous, dangerous industry. Um, everyone knows there's a lot of a lot of people lose their lives every year. So yeah, uh, that's the premise of the company. That's what we're trying to help. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Devin. Yeah, absolutely, my friends. Welcome to Boone, Iowa. Where today we are here at the 2024 Farm Progress Show. We're gonna be walking around, checking out some booths, learning about what's up and coming in agriculture. So let's get into it. Naturally, the first tractor I come to, a John Deere, but this one's a little bit unique. It has this camera stack here on the weights. This is John Deere's autonomous tractor that they have for autonomous tillage solutions. Come around here to the back, show you guys they got some more cameras back here. Nothing's different from this tractor versus the tractors we have at home, except for the cameras up there and the cameras in the back, so it can drive autonomously. We need to climb inside to show you guys the new G5 controller that they have in these John Deere tractors. I've still yet to see one in person, so let's get a look. These are sleek. It's almost like a laptop inside the cab of the tractor here. They have the external monitor as well, so this is the one that comes with the tractor attached to the armrest and here's the additional one they have added in here these things are nice it's all touch screen they don't have the key in it otherwise i'd start it up for you guys to show you but these things are nice of course at the john deere booth here they have the big 9rx 830 the big horsepower tractor drawing a lot of attention down here at the farm show first time seeing this thing in person as well i'm impressed look at how big the hood of this tractor is I'm six foot three, I can't even see the top of the hood. This thing's got a massive hood. Got a nice camera up here. You can see what's in front of you from inside the cab. Cool to see. So if we come around here to the front of the machine, show you guys the cameras. They're up top there on the cab. Now Bergen, are these the same camera stereo stereo cameras that they have on the 8R I was looking at earlier? Um, they're a little bit different, but yes, we are using the two forward-facing cameras on each side of the cab, so by each mirror. Those are those cameras looking out 28 feet in front of the machine, looking at real-time the crop height and crop density, and then we compare that imagery, that real-time feed to the satellite imagery, and that allows us to speed up and slow down proactively. And this is going to be put to use on some machines this fall, right? Yeah, we have some demo machines out there this fall. They've already been running on both S7 combines and X9 combines. Combines, and customers are telling us already that they're seeing increased productivity from this. So quite exciting to get it out there. We're rolling into fall harvest here soon, so we're excited to see it in corn and soybeans. I did manage to find the one thing at the John Deere booth I would be able to afford, and that's just this simple operator seat they have set out here so you can practice on the G5 display. I don't know how much it is, but it's probably the cheapest thing to have out here. I spent too much time at the John Deere booth. I could spend all day there, but unfortunately we're only here for one day. So we got to keep going, find some other exhibits, see what other new technology we can find, learn about here at the show. Don't look. It's red. We don't buy red stuff at the farm. Don't look. Keep walking. Here's the big 715 International Quad Track, the biggest one that they make on the red side of things. Now also here at the case booth, they have one of their seats on one of the tractors. Since we tried the John Deere one, we figure we'll try this one out of the International. Noticing it doesn't have the massaging seat option, 
Also different from the John Deere, here's the Pro 1200, so their display on all the tractors. I've never run something like this, but it's fun to punch around and see what the options are on a different type of machine. Now we came outside of the case booth. We're here with Jeff. He's gonna to talk to us a little bit about the technology on the red side of things, on the AF-10 here, showing us some of the equipment that he can manage and view from the phone. Here we've got full integration with our new field ops. So you can see here, we're standing right next to the AF-10 on this, and we've got the AF-11 over on the corner of the booth that you can see on here too. Well, can we jump in the cab and you can show us some yeah, stuff? Yeah, for sure. I tried out the seat back in there. That was, yeah, I was gonna say, one of the first things that you gotta check out here is the new seat. So, oh, dang, all the controls are down here. Yep. That uh, is nice. Heated, heated, cooled. And my favorite, massage. Massage, they didn't have that inside there and I made that comment and everybody's like, of course you make that comment. Now they yeah. do. Yep, here it is. That's awesome. So, all right, what else yeah, do they have inside awesome. here? So yeah, very similar controls to our 260 series uh, and other combines that we got. So as we, uh, you know, look at this big combine here, it's not going to feel so foreign. Right. We were looking at the 1200 back in there. Yep. So similar uh, look and feel to what we've got across our our other machines. Yep. So that's kind of nice. Again, full integration with Field Ops, so I could pull up my phone and I could log in here and I could see, see all what's this. on these screens. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. These things look familiar. Our Martin Till row cleaners off the planter. We have the exact same ones. Obviously they got different styles, but you guys should recognize these. Somehow made my way over to the air tractor exhibit. Looks a lot different than the normal tractors we've been viewing today. Got Adam here. Yeah, this system here is called the Swath Pro system. It's made by Capstan Ag Systems. So it's individually nozzle control, it's pulse width modulation. So ground rigs that do pulsing nozzles, that's the exact same technology that's on these planes. When with this system, you can pick what nozzles are on as you're flying across the field by just the press of a button. So if you're doing two gallon work, you hit your two gallon profile up in the cockpit. Yep. And let's say your next field is a three or four gallon work, you hit your next profile. So switches it. it switches it. This fan here on the front is the pump. So that is your this liquid is the, pump. This is the pump? Yep. So this is what produces your pressure. So and they can change the pitch of these blades to, to increase or decrease the pressure in the system. Dang. So that's what, this here is what produces your pressure. Yeah, so this is what's powering the pump. Yeah, this, as, when the prop's running, yeah, this there's, a, there's a switch in the, in the cockpit that has, this has a break in it. Yeah. So they can in, uh, set that break and it stops. Right, so it doesn't so it's spin not if they don't want the producing pump pressure. Yeah. Yep. And as soon as they let the brake off, it's spinning Boom. and then it's producing pressure to the system. Now here's one of the pilots. He wasn't the one that actually landed the plane here at the no. farm show. So I have to give him a little bit of grief, but he's gonna be kind enough to take us up there to look inside the plane, show us some of the technology going on inside there and maybe let us touch the steering controls yep. if, we, if we walk so, up politely. Yeah, I have an operation just south of Des Moines. I'm not an actual ag pilot. I help work on them and I, I fly for fun. And, uh, I'm third generation, so oh, my cool. grandfather, my father yeah. have been in the business. My brother and I run the company together. So, but yeah, we can jump up here and All take right. a look inside the cockpit of the 802 here. This is a air tractor a 802. Uh, it is the largest. Air First off, you call an air tractor instead of a plane. Well, it is a plane, but the air tractor is the model. So there's several different manufacturers gotcha. out there. Okay. An air tractor is this specific built, just like a Chevy or Ford truck. So yep. uh, it's a spray plane. This is an 800 gallon aircraft. It holds about 820 gallons total. Um, it has 360 gallons worth of fuel right here in the wing. So from the edge of the wing out just past the red cap is your wing tank. So we got one on each side and then this holds all the product that we're spraying. So from, Here's the tank. from here up to just in front of that handle and then the rest of it is all engine. Um, it's a 1500 horsepower engine. It's a Pratt & Whitney uh, dash 67 on this aircraft. Uh, five bladed pretzel prop. Cruising is about 190 miles an hour when they're flying. Ooh. When we're spraying, we're doing about 160, 170, uh, depending on the environment. I see the Swath Pro controller up here. Yep. So that's what they're using to control all the nozzles. Yep, that's, yeah, 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 that's our capsim yep. system there. So, uh, cool. you know, if you're in an emergency, this is an emergency depth handle. 
So and what does that do? If you hit the it, emergency, it, it seats opens gonna... up. It opens up the gate, and all the product will come out of the airplane in about three or four seconds. Jeez. So if you're taking off and you have an issue on takeoff, you're not going to make the end of the ru off the end of the runway. We don't use it very often. You know, all to use it. No, yeah, we hope we don't have to use yeah. it. This is really cool. I didn't realize the planes had this on the outside. This is how many gallons are inside that 800 gallon tank. It's a digital reading. Obviously, right now it's only showing one, but just cool way that technology makes their lives easier to help us out as farmers. Here's the rules. We can't trap it with our shirt or any other body parts to the body. So the strategy is we're going to hold both hands out to start, sweep the money down. I'm going to ask to see if I can put the dollar bills in my pocket so I can keep using both hands. That's the strategy. Unique looking tractor. Little retro version of a New Holland here. There's so much cool stuff here I could show you guys, but I'm eventually going to run out of time. This right here, this is a self-propelled irrigator. It's a Yield 360 irrigator. They take it down fields, use a lot where they raise corn for planting for the next year or seed corn. This here kind of shows you how it irrigates the corn. It's on a big reel there on the inside. All that water gets pumped through a hose like that back there, out through the boom to irrigate the water, just like it's doing on this demonstration. While I've been walking around today looking for new technologies, new problems to bring, bring back to the farm, Dad's been walking around today. I haven't seen him since we left the, the opening gate, but he's going around trying to figure out solutions to our grain pit problem back at home. So I'm in the Suka booth, thought maybe I'd run into him here. We'll keep walking, try to find new problems that we can bring back to the farm while he's trying to solve some of the problems we already have at the farm. World's biggest grain cart right there, 3,000 bushels. Fortunately, we don't have a tractor big enough and available in the fall to pull it, but it's cool to see. Now we wandered over. I get drawn in by all the robots and things, piece of equipment that I don't recognize. She's now here with Kate with Solix. She's gonna explain to us this robotic sprayer that's behind us. Yes, yeah, so this is Solix. Um, this is our fully autonomous um, spraying robot really focus on targeted application so only spraying weeds not the crop right so um, like a sea and spray sprayer it sees the weeds sprays the weeds yep yep, yep exactly um so we have a 40 foot boom here um eight cameras on the boom each camera controls three nozzles they'll flick on and off um whenever we've developed our own ai where it'll recognize what's the crop what's the weed mm -hmm. and it kind of differentiates from there uh, two tanks underneath, um, each 20 gallons, um, so 40 gallons total. Right. Um, and this isn't just for demonstration, you have these out in fields this year, people have ran them, right? Yep, exactly. Yep. We had quite a few running in both Illinois and Indiana this year. I'm um, looking to expand that a little bit next year. So Awesome. Perfect. Well, obviously it's interesting, new technology up and coming, so I appreciate the time, Kate. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Here's one thing we don't see a lot in our neck of the woods. The Orange Kubota tractors, they got a few out here today. Morton's got a nice shed up there for their display. Boy, do I wish we had that shed in our yard. Got some older equipment here too, back before the old tire was invented. They even have the other color green tractors here, the Fent ones. I've driven one of those once at Farm Fest. Gotta say I'm impressed by them. They have a ride and drive today. If we have enough time, we'll go ride and drive a Fent tractor. We don't use many augers on the farm, but here at the show, they got a 16 inch diameter, 85 feet maximum height auger. I mean, this thing's got tires that look like they belong on a semi. Got a nice big unloading hopper on it too. It's crazy. Thankfully, we don't need an auger this big, but it's impressive to see. Another thing they have at the farm show is a bunch of older vintage tractors. A lot of these tractors are 50 plus years old. Cool to see. Really makes me wonder if some of these tractors, like we saw earlier today, the X9, the AF10, you think in 50 years those tractors will still be usable, viable, and on display? Really makes a guy wonder. Here we have a little robotic four row planter. It's all self propelled. Kind of cool seeing this thing. Completely self contained. Nice little four row planter. This thing would have been nice to send out this year in all of our drowned out spots to plant it all on its own. Kind of cool. 
Made it through everything at the farm show that I wanted to make it through today. Ran up with mom, met up with mom I should say, at the last roll. What'd you think of this show? You get a bunch of stuff you wanted? I did, I had a good time. I learned a lot, but I'm super, I'm super tired and I'm tired of walking. And I'm hot. It's a fair amount of walking, that's for sure. We're trying to find daddies in one of the other tents, go meet up with him. First time going to a farm progress show. Gotta say, I'm impressed with everything I saw so far. It switches between Boone, Iowa and Decatur, Illinois every other year, so who knows? Maybe next year it'll be in the cards to end up going again to learn some new things. Now we've left the show, saw everything, at least all that the day could provide now that it's four o'clock. So now we gotta make the three and a half hour trip back to the farm. But it was cool to see a lot of things out here today. Hope to come back in the future. But that's it for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya in the next one.